Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Welcome back to my channel. I pray that you are all in the best of health and iman. If you are new, welcome. My name is Nafisa. I make Islam and lifestyle videos. So if you're interested in that kind of content, then please don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and join our family. In today's video, guys, I've been planning to make this video for the longest of times, but other video ideas kept getting in the way and I just thought enough is enough I'm getting it done so last year I went for Umrah and um, ever since I started my channel I've been meaning to make this video to share with sisters you know tips on what to take with them to Umrah and give a few advice here and there because when I was going I searched on YouTube for content like this and to be honest I struggled to find content like this Alhamdulillah I think now there's a few more than they were last year I haven't been for Hajj so I'm titling this video specifically for Umrah because there are some rituals that you perform for Hajj that you don't do for Umrah so that is why but of course you can apply this for your Hajj as well so if you're doing a sort of typical 10 day stay I would suggest you bring about five abayas or jilbabs with and if any of my abayas got dirty or I felt a bit sweaty and the armpit area were a bit you know then I will just wash it with some shampoo and I'll be good to go so inshallah take about five abayas with you including the one that you're wearing and bear in mind that you need a plain one without any designs in order to perform your umrah in it so yeah now onto hijabs you can bring as many hijabs as you want i mean who's a girl to tell you how many hijabs to bring but one thing i will say though is that saudi is typically a desert so it's very hot so please don't forget all your cotton hijabs. Bring your cotton hijabs with you because you're going to thank me later, okay? Now, aside from the cotton hijabs though, I had this other hijab that I wore when I got there and it made life so much more easy and simple for me. And that is one of these um, hijabs. Now, some of the young girls might just be like, I ain't wearing that. That looks like a granny's hijab. Listen, girls, it's practical and it works, okay? So that's just one of these ones that you sort of just pull your head through and... I'm telling you this is not a cotton one but in one of those cases where you're like in a rush you literally get to the hotel you get changed it's like the next salah you can hear it coming you want to just go quickly one of these is gonna save your life okay because you, you ain't got to deal with all of this looking for your head pins and bloody blah, blah you know you just take it literally gather up put your head through cover up and um, you're good to go it's that easy guys so if you can get your hands on one of these I'll say get you know get yourself one otherwise um you can buy loads of these once you get there so they just make life a little bit easier so inshallah if you can get one of these but definitely make sure you bring your cotton hijabs with you also on the issue of clothing i just want to talk about bringing pjs with you now most likely you're going to be sharing hotel with other sisters but you don't want to have everything hanging out do you girls so just bring something cottony something free and flowy something that's just not showing the world everything okay girls depending on the time that you go for your umrah you might find that at night especially in medina it can get a little bit cold if you have a very cozy cardigan sort of wintry cardigan that you can bring with you that you can put on if you're there during the evenings time maybe you go for isha prayers and you're coming back you're a bit cold you can just throw some of this on so bring, bring maybe one or two you're not really going to need any more than that now finally on the issue of clothing is bring a very comfortable pair of shoes girls do not come there with slippers okay because one of the sisters that i went with she brought slippers and by let's say day eight her toes were swollen from all the walking that you have to do you really need a comfortable walking shoes something preferably light very light and airy walking shoes next is to bring a backpack with you now this backpack is slightly big if anyone's wondering I got this from Primark no surprise there um, but the one that I actually took with me it was a little bit smaller than this and it still contained everything in it so I'm now going to show you everything that I put in this backpack and why I say bring a backpack um, um, now in here I have a water bottle you know me and my water bottles guys this water bottle saved me, seriously. This is one of like a really big tip that I would give for sisters. Buy a water bottle. It doesn't have to be a filtered water bottle like this. Just any kind of water bottle will do. Just something quite hard and sturdy. Because what you can do is once you get to Haram and you're walking around and you see um, sort of a keg full of water where you can top up your Zamzam water, 
literally top off your zam zam water and throw it back in your backpack and you can have a drink no matter where you are because sometimes it can get quite congested and just looking at all the people that you need to get past gives you stress so bring a water bottle with you you will thank me later for this the next thing i have in my backpack is my purse of course with all my money and my um hotel room key in there as well and a few other bits and bobs i just literally throw it in there and i'm good to go um also the next thing that really helped me whilst i was there is having my own prayer mat with me now don't get me wrong girls that place is spotless you could sleep on the floor it's that clean but sometimes just in case the cleaners haven't quite got to a certain spot yet and it's time for salah you you just have to stand and pray where you are because you can't always get into the actual masjid itself because sometimes it gets really packed so wherever you are if you join late or anything if you have a prayer mat in your backpack you can just lay it down and pray so bring a very light and small prayer mat with you it's very useful it just means you can pray anywhere you are at and then of course this is not the kind of snack i would have in this backpack but i just threw it in there just to give you an example what I would suggest you do is put like a few snacks in your backpack. I was taking one of those like, you know, those breakfast bars and granola bars type of thing and bringing them with me. But to be honest, Zam Zam water is pretty much like food, isn't it? So that was filling me up most of the time. But if I sort of got hungry and I got a bit peckish and I'm just like around, then I can have a quick snack in my bag that I can just eat before I actually went back to the hotel to have a proper meal. So yep, keep that in mind. And then of course it goes without saying bring either your actual phone with you or bring a small phone with you now this kind of phone yes it's a brick phone um <laughs> but this is the kind of phone i take with me when i'm traveling and i use it to call my family back home because sometimes when you're going there um depending on which umrah or hajj company you're going with they might give you a sim card so you can actually slip it into one of these phones and just easily call your family and you can top up once you get there i'll give you some tips about how to top up once you get to saudi inshallah because there was a whole nother like funny story that went with that but yeah bring your phone with you if you bring your actual phone that your you know your regular phone that you take if you're bringing one of those then you can always contact your family via whatsapp you know it's not really necessary to have another phone like this but if you like to and you like to top up separately and all of that then this is an option or something else that you could bring with you by the way girls if you haven't figured out already i'm one of those people i like to have things in like smaller compartments it just makes life easier for me so that way i know that if i'm looking for something i know exactly where to go to look for it so so next is this really pretty pink bag right here where i keep all like my cosmetic stuffs and when i say cosmetics i don't mean makeup because you definitely don't need makeup over there but obviously my creams and my soaps and things like that by the way girls it's advised that you do not use anything with scents on it whilst you're performing your umrah so um i just poured a little bit of coconut oil into a little travel size container with me and i used that as my moisturizer on the day that I actually performed Umrah and also because when I was there I was literally just about to finish my menstruation so I had to have my bath and I was at all costs trying to avoid anything with scents in it um, because it's advised not to so I brought with me um, this simple bar of soap um, and this one it has no colouring and no perfumes in it so you just need a soap like this to wash yourself with and that's just in between the time where you get into the state of ihram until you've completed your umrah you're not allowed to use anything scented on there so because i took my bath in mecca in preparation for my umrah i still just wanted to make sure that the soap that i was using did not have any perfumes in it so so if you're going to be in a similar state make sure you bring a non-scented soap with you inshallah so you can have your bath in that Right, so next I brought with me this kind of little sewing kit pack thing, which is so cute, I think. One of my year 11 students gave this to me when they were leaving. Um, basically, the reason why I brought them was, of course, it has a few pins in there, so I didn't have to worry about carrying any more pins with me. And it also has um, a measuring tape. You're going to need a measuring tape because as part of the Umrah process, you're going to have to cut your hair. Yes, girls, you heard me, cut your hair. But I think you don't have to cut any more than an inch. So bring with you a, a measuring tape so that you can give to another sister and they can help you measure an inch of your hair and then cut it off. Um, and 
Now, of course, to cut your hair, you're going to bring with you a pair of hair cutting scissors. This is not a hair cutting scissors. Bring a hair cutting scissors with you um, so that, again, another sister can help you cut your hair. Right, I don't have a pair of sunglasses with me anymore, girls, but you might want to bring a pair of sunglasses with you because when I first got there, <laughs> my first day, I was walking around like this. I literally couldn't see the sun was so bright on my face bear in mind I come from London and most of the time we have grey skies in London so when I got there it was just like too much light for my eyes to take so I did struggle for like the first day or two but after that my eyes adjusted so if you want to bring a pair of sunglasses with you why not go ahead it should help a bit so next you might want to bring with you a small bag or a container containing all of your medications in there also bear in mind the kind of person that you are and the kind of you know illnesses and sicknesses that you tend to have sometimes in the summer i might get hay fevers and things like that if you get headaches quite often bring some paracetamols with you of course it's not like you can't buy these things over there you, of course you can but you know if you can bring it with you and just save yourself the time so you can put all your time into actually worshiping Allah and the reason why you're there then it's even better isn't it so and on the issue of medications, I've heard that it is okay for you to take medications to delay your menstrual cycle if you're going to be um, on your menstrual cycle during the time that you're due to go for Hajj. Now, as for Umrah, I'm not sure if it's the same um, sort of ruling, but for me, I was due to finish my menstrual cycle on the night of me arriving in Mecca. So I just let myself go through my natural course and finish. And then when I got there the next morning, I took my bath and started um, and then performed my Umrah. The last but not least is a just a little toiletry bag. This is going to have your sponge, your soap, your toothbrushes and all that kind of stuff with you for you to take because of course you're going to be sharing bathrooms with other sisters and you want to have all of your stuff sort of compact into one um bag if you like so yeah inshallah if you can get another bag get one now i know that going for hajj and umrah comes with a lot of expenses and stuff like that so if you can't afford any of these little mini bags that i'm showing here just get yourself one backpack and then go to tesco's if you live in england and get yourself a clear plastic bag like this um this is actually like a freezer food container container bag um but they work just as great and you can literally just put a whole load of your stuff in there and just put them in your bag and you're good to go so it's just another option for you there okay girls so this is it if i have to remember off the top of my head things for you to definitely bring i would definitely say a backpack bring a prayer mat, bring a water bottle, bring hair cutting scissors and um, a measuring tape with you. Those you cannot go without and make sure you bring all of your medication and all of your sort of menstruation, womanly stuff that you need to bring with you. Those are a must. Everything else, you know, you can decide for yourself what is important and how much of it is important to take. And I will leave the details and list of everything that I've mentioned in this video in the description box down below. So I hope that you guys have definitely found this video useful. I know I would have found a video like this useful if I was going. So yeah, guys, oh, I'm just I'm just so jealous. <laughs> if you're going, make dua for those of us at home. Pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us as well. Uh, to make the all for the ummah at large we are going through such a challenging time at the moment and we need all of the du'as that we can get so please don't forget the rest of us at home and i pray that you have a lovely and safe journey do not forget this is going to be a three-part video so depending on when you see this video if i've already filmed the next two videos i will leave them linked in the description box down below so have a look in there so Jazakallah hey sisters for watching this video and if you know of anyone or you think that anyone might benefit from the content of this video then make sure you share this video out um, so that other sisters will see and benefit as well inshallah and yeah Jazakallah hey girls for watching I'm going to have myself a cup of tea because my throat is getting dry because I've been talking for far too long now so I will see you in my next video inshallah Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh